the science and existence of the soul from vedic perspective and modern science perspective first the science of vedic perspective the existence of the soul avinasini tu tad vidhi yena sarvam idam tatam vinasam avyayasya na kaschit kartum arhati that which pervades the entire body you should know to be indestructible no one is able to destroy that imperishable soul this verse more clearly explains the real nature of the spirit soul which is spread all over the body anyone can understand what is spread all over the body it is consciousness everyone is conscious of the pains and pleasures of the body in part or as a whole this spreading of consciousness is limited within one's own body the pains and pleasures of one body are unknown to another therefore each and every body is the embodiment of an individual soul and the symptoms of the soul's presence is perceived as individual consciousness this soul is described as 1/10000 part of the upper portion of the hair point in size the swetasvatara upanishad 5.9 confirms this balagra satabhagasya satadha kalpitasya cha bhago jiva sa vigyaya sa chanantaya kalpate when the upper point of a hair is divided into 100 parts and again each of such parts is further divided into 100 parts each such part is the measurement of the dimension of the spirit soul similarly the same version is stated kesagra satabhagasya satamsa sadrstadmakha jiva sukshma swarupa ayam sankhya tito hi chit kana there are innumerable particles of spiritual atoms which are measured as 110000 of the upper portion of the hair therefore the individual particle of spirit soul is a spiritual atom is smaller than the material atoms and such atoms are innumerable this very small spiritual spark is the basic principle of the material body and the influence of such a spiritual spark is spread all over the body as the influence of the active principle of some medicine is spreads throughout the body this current of the spirit soul is felt all over the body as consciousness and that is the proof of the presence of the soul any layman can understand that the material body minus consciousness is a dead body and this consciousness cannot be revived in the body by any means of material administration therefore consciousness is not due to any amount of material combination but to the spirit soul in the mundakopanishad 319 the measurement of the atomic soul atomic spirit soul is further explained ऐसो अनुर्त्मा चेतसा विदिवो यस्ण पंचदा संवेश प्रणयश्चित्त ओत प्रचनम यस्शुद्धे विभवती ये सत्मा दि सोल इज एटोमिक इन साइज एंड कैन बी पेसिवड बाय पर्फेक्ट इंटेलिजेंस दिस एटोमिक सोल इज फ्लोटिंग इन दि फाइव काइंड ऑफ एय प्राण अपान व्यान समान एंड उदान इज सिचुएटेड विद इन दार्ट एंड स्प्रेड्स इज इन्फ्लुएंस ऑल ओवर द बॉडी ऑफ द एम्बॉडिड लिविंग एंटिटीज वेन दि सोल इज प्यूरिफाइड फ्रॉम द कॉन्टेमिनेशन ऑफ द फाइव काइंड ऑफ मटीरियल एयर इट्स स्पिरिचुअल इन्फ्लुएंस इज एग्जिबिटेड The Hatha Yoga system is meant for controlling the five kinds of air and circling the pure soul by different kinds of sitting postures not for any material profit but for liberation of the minute soul from the entanglement of the material atmosphere so the constitution of the atomic soul 
is admitted in all Vedic literatures and it is also actually felt in the practical experience of any sane man. Only the insane man can think of this atomic soul as all-pervading Vishnu Tattva. The influence of the atomic soul can be spread all over a particular body. According to the Mundaka Upanishad, this atomic soul is situated in the heart of every living entity. And because the measurement of the atomic soul is beyond the power of appreciation of the material scientists, some of them assert foolishly that there is no soul. The individual soul is definitely there in the heart along with the super soul. And thus all the energies of bodily movement are emanating from this part of the body. The corpuscles which carry the oxygen from the lungs gather energy from the soul. When the soul passes away from this position, the activity of the blood generating fusion ceases. Medical science accepts the importance of the red corpuscles, but it cannot ascertain that the source of the energy is the soul. Medical science, however, does admit that the heart is the seat of all energies of the body. Such atomic particles of the spirit whole are compared to the sunshine molecules. In the sunshine there are innumerable radiant molecules. Similarly, the fragmental parts of the Supreme Lord are atomic sparks of the rays of the Supreme Lord called by the name Prabha or superior energy. So whether one follows Vedic knowledge or modern science, one cannot deny the existence of the spirit soul in the body. And the science of the soul is explicitly described in the Bhagavad Gita as it is by the Supreme Lord by the Supreme God Himself. Now the existence of the soul through the perspective of the modern science. The reality of the soul is among the most important questions of life. Although religions go on and on about existence, how do we know of the souls really, really exist? A string of new scientific experiments, experiments helps answer these ancient spiritual questions. The idea of the soul is bound up with the idea of a future life and our belief in a continued existence after death. It's said to be the ultimate animating principle by which we think and feel but isn't dependent on the body? Many infer its existence without scientific analysis of reflection. Indeed, the mysteries of the birth and death, the play of consciousness during dreams, and even the commonest, commonest mental operations such as imagination and memory suggest the existence of vital life force. Yet, the current scientific paradigm doesn't recognize the spiritual dimension of life. We are told we have just the activity of carbon and some proteins. We live a while and die. And the universe, it too has no meaning. It has all been worked out in the equations. No need for a soul. But biocentrism, a new theory, of everything challenges this traditional materialistic modern of reality. In all directions, this outdated paradigm leads to insoluble enigmas, to ideas that are ultimately irrational. But knowledge is the prelude to wisdom and soon our worldwide view catch up with the facts. Of course, most spiritual people view the soul as emphatically more definitive than the scientific concepts. It's considered the incorporeal essence of a person and is said to be a immortal and transcendent of material existence. But when scientist speaks of the soul, the spirit soul, it's usually in a materialistic contest to treat it as a poetic synonym for the mind. Everything noble about the soul can be learned 
by studying the functioning of the brain. In their view, neuroscience is the only branch of scientific study relevant to understanding the soul. Traditionally, science has dismissed the soul as an object of human belief or reduced it to a psychological concept that shapes our cognition of the observable natural world. The terms life and death are thus nothing more than the common concepts of biological life and biological death. The animating principle is simply the laws of chemistry and physics. You and you and all the poets, philosophers that ever lived are just dust orbiting the core of the Milky Way galaxy. As I sit here in my office surrounded by piles of scientific books to research the science of the soul, I can't find a single refer to the soul or any notion of in me, in me, in me, dear, in material eternal essence that occupies our being indeed. Our soul has never been seen under an electric microscope, no spun in the laboratory, in a test tube or ultra centrifuge. According to these books, nothing appears to survive the human body after death. While neuroscience has made tremendous progress illuminating the functioning of the brain, why we have a subjective experience remains mysterious. The problem of the soul lies exactly here, in understanding the nature of the self, the I in existence that feels and lives life. But this isn't just a problem for biology and cognitive science, but for the whole of Western natural philosophy itself. Our current worldwide, the world of objectivity and naive realism is beginning to sow fatal cracks. Of course, this will not surprise many of the philosophers and other readers who, contemplating the works of men such as Plato, Socrates and Kant, and a Buddha and other great spiritual teachers, kept wondering about the relationship between the universe and the mind of a man. Biocentrism and the soul. Recently, biocentrism and other scientific other theories have also started to challenge the old psychochemical paradigm and to ask some of the difficult questions about life. Is there a soul? Does anything endure the ravages of time? Life and consciousness are central to this new view of being, reality and the cosmos. Although the current scientific paradigm is based on the belief that the world has an objective observer-independent existence, real experiments suggest just the opposite. We think life is just the activity of atoms and particles, which spin around for a while and then dissipate into nothingness. But if we add life to the equation, equation we can explain some of the major puzzles of modern science including the uncertainty principle entangled and the fine tuning of the laws that shape the universe. Consider the famous two-slit experiment. When you watch a particle go through the holes, it behaves like a bullet passing through one slit to the other. But if no one observes the particle, it exhibits the behavior of a wave and can pass through both slits at the same time. This and other experiments tell us that unobserved particles exist only as waves of probability. probability. As the great noble Lurot Max Born demonstrated in 1929, they are statistical predictions, nothing but a likely outcome until observed. They have no real existence, only when the mind sets the scaffolding in place can they be thought of as having duration of position in space? Experiments make it increasingly clear that even mere knowledge in the experiment's mind is sufficient to convert possibility into reality. Many scientists dismiss the implications of these experiments because until recently this observer-dependent behavior was thought to be confined to the subatomic world. However, this is being challenged by researchers around the world. In fact, just this year a team of physicists, Nature Communications, showed that quantum weirdness, weirdness 
also occurs in the human scale world. They studied huge compounds composed up to 430 atoms and confirmed that this strange quantum behavior extends into the larger world we live in. Importantly, this has a direct bearing on the question of whether humans and other living creatures have souls. As Kant pointed out over 200 years ago, everything we experience including all the colors, sensations and objects we perceive are nothing but representations in our mind. Space and time are simply the mind's tools for putting it all together. Now, to the amusement of idealists, scientists are beginning dimly to recognize that those rules make existence itself possible. Indeed. The experiments above suggest that objects only exist with the real properties if they are observed. The results not only defy our classical intuition but suggest that a part of the mind, the soul, is immortal and exists outside of space and time. Robert Lenza, MD, a currently Chief Scientific Officer at the Astellas Institute of Regenerative Medicine and Adjunct Professor at Wake Forest University School of Medicine. This is his article.